If you've ever used Google's Quick Share or apps like LocalSend for transferring files to and from different devices, you might have faced a couple of issues. The former offers quick file sharing but can fall short in reliability and consistency, while the latter delivers great dependability but at a slower transfer speed. And when handling large files, entire folders, or just attempting to send something over the internet, both begin to show their limitations. Blip is a fast, unlimited file transfer app that steps in as a powerful alternative. It uses direct, encrypted peer-to-peer -peer connections to send files straight between devices. No cloud uploads involved. And unlike most local transfer tools, Blip doesn't require the devices to be physically close or even on the same Wi-Fi network as it works over the internet. This approach cuts down delays and handles large files and complex folder structures quite easily. And from my testing, it also outperforms other services like QuickShare and LocalSend, which rely on a mix of slower or more limited transfer methods. One of the best parts about the app is that it runs quietly in the background. You don't need to open the app or even keep it active during transfers. As long as you're signed in with the same account across your devices, they'll stay discoverable for quick sharing at any time. It's a surprisingly polished experience, especially considering that the app is completely free for personal use. No ads, no file size limits, and for the most part, no throttling. While you may naturally wonder how Blip sustains this model, the developers have openly discussed aspects of their approach, emphasizing user privacy and transparency. That said, running a service like this at the developer's end does come with some costs. And to cover those, Blip offers a paid tier aimed at enterprise users priced at around $25 per user per month. The main difference between these tiers isn't in speed. Both free and paid users get the same fast transfers, but in consistency and reliability. The paid plan gives you prioritized bandwidth and better performance in tricky network situations, which can matter in commercial or time-sensitive use cases. Having covered the Everything Widgets pack last month, a pack inspired from the native Nothing OS widgets, bringing the same level of polish, but with a focus on Samsung's signature style this time around, the very same developer has released the One UI Widgets pack. These widgets stand out as they don't require any extra setup via apps like KWGT. You simply pick the widget you like, add it to your home screen, and it's ready to use. The collection covers all the essentials, clocks, weather, calendar, music controls, basic utilities, app shortcut widgets, some mini games, and a whole lot more. Each widget is very well crafted, mimicking the signature style that Samsung's One UI widgets are renowned for. As per usual, you also have matching wallpapers included in the app, as well as themed icon packs in various styles sold separately, allowing you to create a complete and cohesive home screen setup. Radio is a neat RSS reader that helps you keep all your favorite websites, blogs, and podcasts in one place. Now, if you've never used an RSS reader before, it's basically an app that pulls new posts from your favorite websites, blogs, and podcasts all into one neat feed. No need to bounce around tons of sites, everything just shows up in one place and updates automatically. You can subscribe to any RSS feed you want by finding the feed's URL, and once you have the link, just paste it into the app to add the feed. Something you'd notice right off the bat is that the interface is really clean, which makes it simple to browse through feeds and focus on reading. And if you'd rather listen than read, there's a handy read aloud feature that is on with that. You can organize your subscriptions into folders and pin your favorite feeds to the top for easy access. On the customization front, the app offers some solid options. You can tweak the read view, choose between different typefaces, adjust font sizes, and spacing controls let you make articles as comfortable to read as you like. There's not only support for light and dark themes, but also support for material U, allowing you to match the app's appearance to your device's look, offering a more personalized feel. Based on my initial usage so far, the app does offer some level of caching, allowing you to read articles offline. Though I wasn't able to find any setting to adjust the cache size, nor is it clear if this sort of cache management is intended as a user-facing feature. Nonetheless, having some level of offline access is definitely a welcome addition. Unlike a lot of RSS readers these days that try to reel you in by AI based features, Radio is just a great option for folks who want an app delivering them with a calm and no frills reading experience. Next up on the list is Notely X. This is a note-taking application with a very clean and straightforward interface reminiscent of the Google Keep app. Create if you just want to jot down notes quickly without distractions. Compared to the original Notely app, this forked version gets you a lot of handy extras such as reminders that tie straight into your notifications. It handles attachments as well, so you can drop in photos, audio files, and even new documents. You can label, pin, color, and organize your notes however you like, and display them in either a list or a grid view. If you do tend to sometimes forget and make a regular note instead of making a shopping list, the app allows you to easily convert that note into a list. There's also a widget if you'd like to have your list or reminders front and center on your home screen, and the best part is that as the app is free and open source, all your data is kept private and on your device. No accounts, no ads, and no tracking. 
The app allows you to import your existing notes from your previous note-taking app of choice and can also create local backups automatically to an assigned location. Something to note, however, is that all this privacy does come at a cost. There's no automatic syncing across devices. But as mentioned, if you value privacy, easy organization, and some powerful features without feeling weighed down, the app can be a solid addition to your digital toolkit. Pinit is a neat app that does one job and it does that job well. It helps you pin important alerts and notifications so they stay visible until you're done with them. Whether it's a message you don't want to forget, a to-do you need to act on, or just a quick note to yourself, the app helps you keep it easily accessible right in your notification tree. It stores all your dismissed notifications in a searchable history, so you can easily find missed messages or information by keyword, date, or the corresponding application. Honestly, it's kind of surprising how this sort of functionality isn't natively built into Android already. All notification data is stored locally on your device, focusing on privacy, with no ads as the app offers a 14-day free trial after which it requires a one-time payment to continue functioning. Wrapping things up, we have Shots Studio. The app is inspired by the AI-driven Pixel Screenshots app, which intelligently organizes, summarizes, and makes screenshots easily retrievable by analyzing their contents. This approach addresses a common problem. Finding important screenshots quickly amidst a large disorganized gallery can often be a hard task. By making screenshots searchable by text, objects, or topics, the app helps you recall and find the screenshot you're looking for in a more efficient manner. Unlike Pixel Screenshots, which is limited to Pixel phones and closed source, Shot Studio is fully open source, allowing you to perform AI-backed search and tagging on your screenshots using Google's own Gemini AI by a user-provided API key, which can be obtained for free from the Google AI Studio website. Once you've pasted your API key, the app then automatically tags and allows you to group screenshots into custom collections. You just create a collection, give it a title, enable smart categorization, and there you go. The app will scan across your entire screenshots library and add the images it thinks belong in your title category. Now mind you, as this is using semantic search that goes deeper than just text-based extraction, allowing searches by image content and topics recognized by AI, the initial setup does take some time. But once it is set up, it works surprisingly well. And that's about it. Those were some of the best apps for the month. Let me know if you found any of them helpful. And if you have any apps that you'd like to suggest, you can mention them in the comments section. A like on this video goes a long way and a sub even longer. That being said, thank you all so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.